Well, I think that the small airways are present in every individual. So it's very strange question. In fact, if we ask ourselves, is small airway impairment only present in severe asthma? We all have something in the small airways. And let alone if you smoke, you get some effects in your small airways. But the thing is that you have to realize who is having most worse small airway dysfunction. So the effects are really bad and there's inflammation. And what we thought in the past was it's only in severe asthma. And that was because we wanted to have something in our mind that was different in severe asthma. But we now know that inflammation is present in all types of asthma. It's only the extent of remodeling, the extent of the inflammation that may differ. But it may also differ by exposure. So if you have a mild asthma patient that has been exposed to cats because he or she went to the grandmother and the grandmother is favorite of cats and has 25 cats, just imagine, and you're there the weekend, then you have small airway inflammation. It doesn't matter if you have mild or severe. But the difficult part is, is that reversible or not? And that's depending on the treatment we use. The prevalence of a severe airway disease in all stages of asthma is difficult to say. I would like to give you a very clear answer. It's 10% in mild and 40% in very severe, but that's not the truth. We do not exactly know. That's the problem. We know some aspects. There is one measure that's called IOS, and IOS measures a little bit do airway, small airways collapse after expiration in this area or that area? And what you measure there is that 60% of all asthmatics have some peripheral disease in the small airways. But there are other met methods to measure as well, like multiple breast nitrogen was out, which much more specifically looks at the airway diameter. And there we do not know. No one has looked at it. Someone has compared 10 patients with severe asthma with 10 with mild asthma. But, well, we all know that asthma is a heterogeneous disease, so over the full spectrum, we do not know it yet. The interesting thing is that Atlantis is a study on all severities of asthma. And it's a broad spectrum of asthma, but it's also a broad spectrum of severity of asthma. So we, what we do is we're going to recruit 800 asthmatics and 100 healthy individuals. And we're going to very intensively characterize them. And that's what they nowadays call phenotyping. So we get phenotypes on large airways, on small airways, on allergy, on hyper responsiveness. We even do a CT scan at baseline to see what's in the airways and extensive lung function measures. And a lot of question is to see how the control of these individuals is and their quality of life. And then we're going to follow them for one full year. And that full year, we follow them just like they live. We're not going to change the treatment because we want to test a drug, but we just say this is real life and we're going to learn how is the cause of the small airway dysfunction across all those severities and with all those measurements. So they come back every six months for extensive phenotyping and every three months we just ask them questions by phone. We only do hyper-responsiveness, a bronchoscopy in a subset and a CT scan at baseline because that's quite extensive phenotyping which you do not want to do every six months. But all the other measurements are being done at six months and 12 months again. And that allows us not only to see at baseline if small airway disease is present in all stages of asthma, but also to see if those who have small airway dysfunction, whatever the stage is, if they have less control of the asthma over a year follow-up. But we can also see if we have signs that some people may develop small airway dysfunction. And that's the aim of Atlantis to better see what small airway dysfunction prevalence is, how we best detect it. Of course, everyone hopes for one measure to measure small airway dysfunction, but I don't think that will occur. I think we will have a combination. But even if we have a combination, we know how to assess it. 
And then we can see in real life and in studies what is the best treatment for those patients.